Hi, I'm Erin, and this is week five of Communications 101, and we are on chapters 9, 10, and 11. Chapter 9 talks about organizing your speech, and this is really important because if you don't have your speech well organized, then your audience will be so focused on trying to follow you that they will totally miss the point of your message. So first you want to choose your main points. What are the most important parts of the topic that you want to get across? You want to be careful that you're not going on rabbit trails or into things that are loosely related to your topic. And then you'll want to think about your audience again like we've talked about before and what's the most important thing for them to hear. You want to stick to two to five main points. You can do any any amount of main points but three is usually a pretty good number to have. Too many and you'll lose your audience and you'll have trouble getting enough supporting material for all of them. You can think of it like a hierarchy so you have your main points and then under your main points are your sub points and then you have your sub sub points that support your sub points. And there's different ways you can organize your main points. There's spatial so if you're doing a speech on geography or the main points are in geographical locations you could move across the map or say you're like doing a top doing a speech on um, the human body you might start from head to toe things like that chronological so doing it in chronolo chron chronological order or casual so that's this happened so this happened um, compare, comparing and contrasting and categorical or topical And then you want to make your organi organization clear in your speech as you present it. So you'll use transition words and different signals to help your audience know that you're moving on to the next point. You can use signposts, so words or phrases that help them to know where you're at. And so you can say things like, in summary or according to so that they know what's coming next. And you'll give them, you could also give them a glimpse of what you're talking about. So in your introduction you can list your main points so that they're prepared. Chapter 10 is introductions and conclusions. So you can start strong and get your audience interest and then a strong conclusion will create a lasting impression. So your introduction, you want to get your audience's attention. So you'll tell, maybe tell an interesting story or make a powerful statement. You can use statistics. Say you're doing a speech on suicide. You could do, you know, the rise in suicide side rates or something of that nature. Or make a connection with your audience. Say you know they're all Phillies fans or something. You could somehow connect that with your speech. Or tell a joke, just be careful that it's appropriate and that you're not going to offend anyone in the audience. So make sure that you know your audience well and that they'll think it's as funny as you do. Or you could ask a rhetorical question and that'll help them start thinking about what you're going to say and how it'll apply to them. Or you could use a good quote. So then you'll also want to make sure that you make your thesis statement clear. Okay, so then there's the conclusion. And the purpose of the conclusion is to sum up what you said and then turn your audience attention to what you want them to take away from your message. After transition from your body to your conclusion, use a transitional phrase. You need to summarize your main points. Tell them what you told them. So sort of retrace your steps. We've covered these points and these points were X, Y, Z. So after you, then you want to end with a clincher. So that's something that's going to leave a lasting impression on your listeners. And have them thinking about what you said even after they leave the room. So that might be finishing a story that you started in your introduction that 
kind of comes full circle and brings them to the main point of the message or something that's thought provoking or maybe a few sentence sentences to help reinforce what you were getting across chapter 11 so to have a good organized speech it needs to be properly outlined it doesn't just help your audience but it helps you prepare as well and there's two types of outlines outlines the first is the working outline and the working outline is just like it sounds it helps you to work out your speech and the working outline will be very detailed it will have the hierarchy with the main points and the sub points and the sub sub points that support them it will kind of look like a skeleton of what you're trying to get across and then you slowly flesh it out as you do your research and you also put in how you're going to connect those ideas to one another how the introduction will transition into the body and the body into the conclusion as well as the things you'll use to get your audience attention and then you have the speaking outline which is what you're going to use to do your speech from this will be a lot more simple and it will just be keywords that will help you to remember what you're going to say and to help you stay on track. So you can write this on cue cards but you want to make sure that it's very neat and clean and that the most important things are in bold so that you can easily read it without looking so closely at it that you aren't looking at your audience and you're just reading reading it rather than conversing with them. You can also put in clues like remember to smile or say you have a presentation you can write things like change slide here and things like that to help your speech go as smooth as it can. So that's chapters 9, 10, and 11. Thanks for listening.